The following is part of a series of occasional videos related to the interdisciplinary and multi-institutional partnerships with the National Science Foundation funded High Performance Wireless Research and Education Network via the University of California, San Diego. This video discusses ongoing collaborative research on energy efficient wireless sensor networks by UCSD's Computer Science and Engineering Department with a substantial focus on experimentation at San Diego State University's Santa Margarita Ecological Reserve. HPRAN is a collaborative cyber infrastructure on research, education and public safety activities, reaching predominantly remote environments within an about 20,000 square mile area in Southern California. My name is Tayana shimunich rosing I'm faculty at University of California, San Diego, and I've had great pleasure to be involved in HP Brand project for the last four years. In fact, today uh, we're down here in Santa Margarita Reserve, right next to a data logger, which is uh, one of the good examples of devices that collect data from sensors. They're set up all the way around in this environment. This particular data logger is powered by line power. It happens to be in a fortunate location where we could bring the cabling. Many of such devices in Santa Margarita Reserve actually have to be powered by solar cells and by batteries. And one of the big problems that we run into is that the batteries that are required for the continual operation are fairly big and fairly expensive. So it is the goal of our project to ensure that uh, we uh, use the energy that's available in the batteries and from solar cells as efficiently as possible, and therefore that we can shrink down the size of these batteries and hopefully make deploying such devices all over Santa Margarita Reserve and other areas of HP REN much cheaper and much more efficient. I have two students involved in this project. One of the students' name is Eduardo Regini, and his work is focused specifically on trying to optimize how much power is used for communication. It turns out that in a lot of devices such as this, we use actually wireless LAN to send the data to the back end, which sits on top of that hill that you see behind me. Um, and the problem with wireless LAN is that it's not designed to be all that power efficient. So a very large fraction of power goes, in fact, to communication. Eduardo will tell you a lot of the details about his work, but the goal effectively was to try to keep communication off the air as much as possible so batteries last as long as possible. The other student will talk about uh, how we decrease the amount of power that's consumed by processing. So the device such as this data logger uses a processor that's similar to what you have in your smartphones. And in order to effectively use this processing power, we're able to change voltage and frequency. So Gaurav Diman will be telling you a little bit about strategies that we use to analyze the workload that the processor has to process and to change voltage and frequency accordingly. So we end up with much more efficient solution. Uh, my advisor is Tayana Simonich Rosing, and I'm pursuing a master um, degree in computer science. We developed a scheduling and routing algorithm for heterogeneous wireless sensor networks such as HP RAN. Our goal is to save energy. Uh, the issue in such network um, might be that nodes are battery powered and thus they have a limited uh, amount of energy available. Um, so our goal is to um, make the deployment uh, of the network cheaper and uh, uh, enable nodes uh, to extend their lifetime. Uh, the problem again uh, is energy consumption, and this gets worse uh, when, when uh, in the presence of high traffic loads. This is because communication is a power-hungry task uh, and can drain battery very, very quickly. Uh, also, um, communication uh, might become inefficient in the presence of uh, high traffic loads. For this, we developed a scheduling and routing algorithms to address uh, these issues. Uh, our uh, solution uh, is composed by two main components. Uh, we have uh, a scheduling algorithm and a forwarding backbone algorithm. With the scheduling algorithm, we basically um, uh, enable uh, a large set of nodes uh, to shut down, to switch off their network interfaces for a large amount of time, thus saving power. Um, with the forwarding backbone algorithm, uh, we basically build a backbone of active nodes uh, throughout the networks, and we, we um, we control uh, these nodes so that uh, connectivity is maintained and we can efficiently uh, forward the packets throughout the network. 
We tested our solution um, with uh, um, experiment on a test band network and with uh, simulation, extensive simulations. And what we found is that we can achieve uh, large power saving up to uh, 60%. Uh, that means um, that we can reduce the cost of expensive uh, battery replacements. And also we found that we can deliver the packets uh, efficiently when compared to, to previous solutions. Uh, furthermore, our solution uh, is above the MAC layer. By being above the MAC layer, uh, we avoid expensive hardware or software, uh, hardware or firmware uh, modification, and thus we can deploy uh, quickly, easily, and cheaply our solution uh, because we can use off-the-shelf components. In conclusion, our solution can achieve large power saving and provide uh, low latency uh, to packets. Furthermore, since it is above the MAC layer, we can use off the shelf co components, um, and uh, thus we can deploy easy, quickly, uh, and cheaply uh, our solution. Uh, by achieving such large power saving, uh, our solution is cheap in the sense that uh, networks such as HP VRAN could cut their costs uh, importantly by avoiding uh, frequent uh, battery replacements. Okay, I would like to show you now a great example of a sensor installation. What you see on this tower from the top is a way we measure wind speed. Then there are two uh, very high quality video cameras. Just beneath, we're measuring temperature with high resolution, with also a good 3D idea of how well the wind is flowing through the temperature measurement. And then there's a whole bunch of other sensors. Finally, at the bottom, you see a data logger. And this is exactly what I was talking about at the beginning of this particular video. The fact is that we have a lot of different types of sensors all, all throughout Santa Margarita Reserve. And these sensors will gather the data, bring them to the data logger. Data logger needs to do some pre-processing of the data. And in order to really be able to do this in an energy efficient way, we need new techniques that save power. Those are the techniques that Gaurav Diman will be telling you all about. About. Hi, uh, my name is Gaurav Diman. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate at University of California, San Diego, Computer Science and Engineering Department. Uh, I'm working with Professor Diana Simonich Rosing, and I'm going to talk, be talking about uh, our research on dynamic power management using online learning that is being done and with collaboration with uh, HPW REN. So the main problem that we're trying to target here is to understand that how we can make the battery uh, powered devices uh, last longer by making sure that they make use of the low power states and their sleep states in a very efficient way. So this, this, this uh, process of using sleep states efficiently is known as dynamic power management. And the software that is used to perform dynamic power management uh, online is referred to as dynamic power management policies. Now there's quite a bit of research that already exists on uh, dynamic power management policies. However, the existing dynamic power management or DPM policies do not adapt optimally with changing workloads. There are some simple policies like timeout and predictive policies which are heuristic in nature and do not offer any guarantees. In contrast, there are some stochastic policies which are optimal for stationary workloads. And as a result, what we observe is that these policies outperform each other for different devices and different workloads. So what is our objective? Our objective is to take a set of DPM policies which might be optimized for different workloads and then perform dynamic selection among them to select the best suited policy for the current workload. Now, for such an approach, the major challenges that we face is that how do we identify what, what is the best suited policy and how to identify that the workloads are changing themselves. So our solution to this uh, problem is to use online learning. So using online learning, what we do is that we perform dynamic selection and evaluation of the different policies that we have, which are optimized for different workloads, dynamically at runtime. And the algorithm that we use is referred to as the online learning algorithm for performing this evaluation and selection at runtime. And why do we use online learning? The reason is that it guarantees performance, overall performance that is close to that of the best available policy in the set among which we are performing the selection. So this diagram over here gives an overview of how our system actually works. Uh, we take, as, as, as mentioned before, we take a selection of policies. We refer to these policies as the experts and the whole set as the working set. So these policies are optimized for different workloads, uh, for managing power on different workloads on the device, which is shown here. 
And our online learning algorithm is referred to as the controller. And the primary role of the controller is to perform the evaluation of these experts and selection dynamically at runtime. So these experts by default are in the dormant state. And whenever uh, an idle period or some amount of inactivity happens, the controller selects one of these experts. The white, one ex white expert over here is the operational expert. Uh, it gets selected based on what it thinks is the best suited expert for the current workload. And then basically this operational experts, uh, expert for that uh, particular idle period or uh, amount of inactivity takes the power management decisions for it. This diagram over here shows that how the controller performs uh, the evaluation of the experts. So what it takes as an input is a weight vector for the experts, which basically uh, at any point in time reflects how well the experts are performing for the current workload. And then on the basis of the, uh, the, the performance of these experts for the current idle period or the amount of inactivity, uh, based on power savings and performance delay that it uh, incurs, it updates the weight vector for all the experts. So on the basis of this, if the workload changes, the uh, algorithm is able to keep track of it and then switch to an expert which might be better suited for that workload. This uh, section over here actually shows the uh, detailed formal uh, display of the algorithm that we actually use. So it shows the weight vector W over here, where which comprises of weight factors associated with each of the experts as shown above. And then for each idle period, which is referred to as T over here, one, two, three, whichever shows up, it basically chooses expert with the highest probability factor in uh, a, a probability, probability vector RT, which is nothing but the normalized form of this weight vector. When the idle period starts, this chosen expert, which is referred to as operational expert as I described above, performs DPM for that particular idle period. When the idle period ends, it simply performs an evaluation, as we mentioned above, of all the experts. And on the basis of that uh, evaluation, it calculates a loss factor, which takes into account how well each of the experts would have performed had they been chosen instead. And, in, and it also includes the expert which was actually chosen. And then, based on that loss, it updates the weight vector according to this equation over here. So the cool thing about this algorithm is that it gives a performance bound as shown here. What this uh, performance bound basically encapsulates is that as time goes by, the performance of this overall performance of this methodology uh, converges to that of the best expert within the set. So that kind of gives you a guarantee that you'll always converge to the performance of the best policy in the set. Over here uh, in this section, we show the different experiments and the results that we uh, did with our uh, methodology. So we did uh, performed experiments on two devices. One was the hard disk and the other was WLAN, uh, which, uh, which is a wireless CAD. And we use workloads with varying characteristics to see how our algorithm can adapt. So in this diagram on with the WLAN card, we, uh, this, this figure basically shows uh, the performance of the different experts that we had chosen and the, uh, the performance of our controller. So what it shows here is the performance, the white line over here shows the performance of the different experts individually, if, if they had been performing uh, individually for the whole workload. So we can see that different experts give you different performance overhead and energy savings. So over here you get high energy savings but high performance delay. Over here you get lower energy savings but uh, and, and lower performance delay, lower, lower performance overhead. So the problem with using one policy for the, whole, for the whole duration is that you get this fixed power performance trade-off. Now when we use a controller, by just varying the uh, way we calculate loss, we can easily get different uh, power performance trade-offs within the given range. So if we specify that we are more delay sensitive, the controller will give you lower delay, lower energy savings. When we say that we want higher energy savings, we get higher energy savings as well. So it gives you the flexibility of exploring the different energy performance trade-offs available within the given set of experts. Similarly, over here, we see the same results for the uh, wireless card again, but with different set of experts. So what we see here is that these individual points are uh, different experts, which are state-of-the-art DPM policies. We can see all of them give very widely varying uh, performance um, energy savings trade-offs. And again, we can see that based on how we configure the controller, we can achieve uh, energy savings and performance delay trade-off um, at, at the different points uh, based on what preference we uh, give, give to it. So based on uh, th these results, we claim that 
our online learning based approach gives you the flexibility of uh, getting different energy savings and performance trade offs across the different uh, desired uh, points that a user wants and at any point it gives you a, a guarantee that it will converge to the expert which is best suited for delivering that level of energy performance trade off thank you I wanted to show you some of the exciting extensions that we're doing to this work. Uh, right next to me, down here, you can see one of the first water quality sensors that we have installed here in Santa Margarita River. This sensor monitors a lot of different properties of the water, for example, pH and oxy oxygen levels. And the goal, in fact, is for us to set up a whole sequence of these sensors along Santa Margarita River Creek in order to better understand what's going on with the watershed and with the water supply network. Extensions to this project that we're excited about doing going forward are to tie in the understanding of the water supply with actually where the water is being delivered. So water delivery system in fact also runs right to the left of me. One of the biggest aqueducts in the Southern California is running right by us and in fact supplies a lot of the water that's needed by San Diego County. In San Diego County it turns out we have about 3,500 miles worth of water pipelines which in fact most are very old about 60 years old or older and many of which are falling apart so our goal is to design an intelligent system that can monitor from the supply side which starts right around here in areas like santa margarita reserve and ends right at your doorstep in your households and we would like to be able to not only understand the quality of the water but also catch uh, situations in which water pipelines are starting to disintegrate and detect those situations and then remove the water flow appropriately and and fix the pipeline itself. So I'm very excited about the next stages of this project and I look forward to updating you on that going forward.